Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. And actually, let's just call it uh, a reflection. How about that? This morning, I got up and was drinking coffee, and I wrote the date down at the top, and then I wrote reflection. And I was just thinking about that I have been on Facebook now for a bit over three years. I think it's three years and three months. I've uploaded close to 850 videos. And it occurred to me that, did you know that I have been, since my very first video that I loaded up, and it was about the sovereignty of God, and that is a false teaching. God is not in complete control of all things all the time. My very first video I posted was coming against a false doctrine that's prevalent in the American churches. And why would I say that? Well, the sovereignty of God, believing that God's in complete control of all things all the time, when you get told you've got cancer, you're going to submit to cancer because you couldn't have cancer unless God wanted you to have cancer. See, that's a damaging lie that the church teaches, and it will get you in your grave sooner than you have to be there, right? Okay, so this sovereignty of God teaching, I'm going to throw this in really quick because I'm not wanting to do a main teaching today. But the sovereignty of God, yes, God knows the beginning and the end, but he doesn't know or he does should I say, he doesn't choose to know and be in control of all things all the time. Now I got to prove it to you. Did you know that God did not decide what time you got up this morning? You chose what time to set your alarm, right? Did you know that you decided what you wanted to eat this morning, if you even ate. I didn't eat breakfast, but so I chose not to eat breakfast today. Now, I'll go one step further. Did you know that God does not decide for you how much of something you should eat or what you should not eat, what's not healthy for you? Did you know that he doesn't decide if you're overweight or underweight? He doesn't decide if you're sick or healthy. You do. Did you know he doesn't decide if you go to a doctor? He doesn't decide if you take prescription drugs and how many of those you decide to take. See, so God's not in complete control, is he? Now, do I believe that God's going to get his way ultimately in the end? Oh, you better believe it. He's not going to override your free will or my free will, and he's still mighty and great enough to get what he wants in the end because he's just that super. Yes, he is. So uh, as I was reflecting today, let me keep going. I'm going to read you some more things that I've taught. I taught about suicide over three years ago, and I said back then, answering the question, do people that commit suicide go to hell? And my answer back then was no. And back then, I did not believe in this place called hell where this God who has no love and no mercy throws people to torment them forever in a lake of fire. I've never believed that. And I actually believe the Bible that says that God, his mercy never ends. And he's full of mercy. And he has never ending love for us. See, that's what I believe. So that was kind of opposing itself when I became a believer, so I couldn't believe in hell because of that. Okay. And yes, I have in the last month been teaching about the Roman Catholic lie that St. Jerome put in the Roman Catholic Church in the 5th century, and all the smart people here in America, we know that hell is real <laughs> because we're so arrogant that we think we know everything. No, you're believing a Catholic lie. And look, guys, you don't have to take my word for it. It's right there. All you got to do is get on Google. It would take a person 20 minutes to know that hell doctrine in our American churches is a lie. But you know why we don't? Many of us want to believe that because we have somebody that needs to go to hell. And we don't want God to have mercy on that person, so they need to go to hell and be tortured by an unloving, unmerciful God forever and ever. So anyway, let me keep moving. I also taught a, a series on Job. Did you know uh, the church will go to Job and pull out things out of context, either by Job or his three friends, 
and form church doctrines out of that book from people that did not know God. No, they did not know God. I'm going to quote a scripture for you real quick. Jesus said, no one, that would include the four people in the book of Job, by the way, no one has ever fully known or understood the Father except the Son. Okay, now, so Job didn't have an excuse for not knowing God, nor did his three friends, because they didn't have Jesus to look at, read about, know about, to know the Father. We are without excuse for going to the Old Testament or the book of Job to make doctrines about God from men that did not know God. We have no excuse because we do have Jesus. And Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So when you're teaching things out of the book of Job, that's opposite of who Jesus says God is. That means that you don't really know Jesus or you would know that that was untrue. Kind of deduction there. But we go over to the book of Revelation in the New Testament and we go and do our little verse snatching out of that. And then we get in pulpits and teach some of the stupidest stuff from a book that the writer says in the very first two or three verses. The writer of the book of Revelation says that he is writing in symbolism. And we take and turn it into something literal. And we will point to that. See, it says that right there. And we have no clue what the man's trying to tell us because by 110 A.D., the church leaders did not know what the book of Revelation meant and what it was being written about. You can check that in history, too. You can read the councils and the arguments that they had for 300 years about the book of Revelation. All of this stuff is out there, guys. All you got to do is take the time and research it. It's right there for you. I'm not coming up with something new. I've just slowed down long enough to research things. Okay, so I've also taught about the lie of the tithe. Did you know the lie of the tithe says that we owe a church system 10% of our gross income so they can pay church bills? There is no such thing as a tithe in the New Testament. Number one, there's no such thing as a church building where you owe a bank money against that building or that there are clergy salaries, cars and houses and all of that. No, the tithe was always food because there's always going to be hungry people and God was trying to provide for hungry people. Did you know if we took the church tithe one Sunday in the United States, we could do away with hunger in the United States? Do you think that's going to happen? I don't either. Okay. I've also taught about the fact that there is no such thing as a sinner's prayer for salvation in your Bible. Because it's not. Go back and read the book of Acts. Nowhere do you see any of the apostles or the evangelists, if you want to call them that, telling people to say a sinner's prayer for salvation so they don't go to hell and they go to heaven. It's just simply not in your Bible. There are sinners who are praying but there's no such thing as a sinner's prayer of salvation. What they did teach was what Jesus told them to teach in Matthew 28, 19 and 20 and 21. Go and teach and instruct. That Greek word is instruct people all the things that I taught you. Jesus taught them how to live in this earth right now in the kingdom of God how to love God, love people, do good to people, love your enemies, and live in peace in the earth. That's what Jesus taught while he was here. And he told us to go instruct and teach people how to do that. Yes, that's what we're supposed to be teaching. Okay, I've actually taught about communion and how the church has manipulated it and turned it into a false doctrine uh, and made it of no effect. Did you know uh, they say that you got to be a Christian to do communion? What if I told you the 12 men at the table with Jesus at the Lord's Supper? None of them were Christians. We need to think about what we're saying. I teach about healing and deliverance. Did you know I don't know of a healing teacher or a deliverance teacher that I totally agree with everything they teach? Uh, deliverance teachers will say that a person needs to be a Christian or they don't qualify for deliverance. Not one person Jesus delivered in the four Gospels were Christians because everybody that he delivered and everybody that he healed 
were not Christian because it was before the cross. Okay, I've talked about the baptism of Holy Spirit and tongues. I've corrected some wrong teachings on that. I've actually talked about the subject of divorce, which is mistaught in the church as well. So from the very beginning, from me becoming a Facebook Bible teacher, I have taken on false church doctrines. And the reason that I do, guys, is that religious lies will put people in bondage and keep them there. And the longer that you're in bondage of a church religious lie, the bigger that thing grows and the stronger that root will be and you will not be able to know and hear truth at some point and you will remain in bondage if you're not careful, okay? Now, we can all get set free of false teachings. I suggest praying in tongues because, you know, that's what I do. I just pray in tongues. I listen to worship music and I talk to Jesus and Holy Spirit starts showing me things and taking me places for me to study things out. So this has been my kind of my day of reflection of all the things that I have taught since I've been a Facebook Bible teacher. You know, I talked about the pagan Christianity. I've got this book out. And if you ever read this, this will reset how you think about going to church and all of this ridiculous stuff that we do because, see, we're trying to reach God through religion. And you're not going to reach God through religion. You're going to reach God through Jesus. And you're not going to find Jesus through religion. Jesus said, you search the scriptures thinking that you will know me, that you're going to know God. And I'm standing right here in front of you. That's what he was trying to tell them is, you know, you're just going through all these scriptures and you're get, it's kind of like an Easter egg hunt. You're on the wrong trail. And I'm not telling you not to read your Bible. I'm telling you that you got to read your Bible through the lenses of love and Jesus' love. Jesus was the exact image and representation of the Father. He is the only source that you're ever going to find God the Father through. You know, uh, I don't know that I've uh, mentioned this, but in the Old Testament, it mentions, uh, mentions on uh, that uh, God is Father, but it's not personal. It's not a personal where the writer is saying, God is my Father or God is our Father, okay? It wasn't until Jesus came that God would become Father, Abba, Father. 176 times, something like that, in the Gospels, God is referred to as Father. A hundred of those is in the Gospel of John, okay? Almost 300 times in the New Testament, God is referred to as Father. So see, Jesus came and he showed us who the Father is. He is our source of knowing who the Father is and knowing truth. Now, I'm going to let you go today, I think, and tomorrow, I don't know what I'm going to teach, but I'm going to tell you this. I love you and I appreciate each and every one of you who has tuned in and listened to me over time do my Bible teaching snippets. And before I close, let me say this. I've had over 20 people uh, send me private messages on Facebook Messenger thanking me for this last thing that I've been talking about, the false doctrine of hell, and that God is going to bring all things back into reconciliation to himself ultimately at some point, okay? I've had over 20 people thank me for uh, teaching about that. I've got one pulled up that I was going to read to you today. She just talks about how she appreciates me and her journey with God. That one time she was pretty much a King James only kind of person. And I showed her that that was probably an error on her part. And here's something else that she said. She said, uh, I think the reason I believed in this unending conscious torment for sinners was because I read only the King James Bible. But she thanked me, guys, because her mother died in a car wreck and her mother was Catholic and she said she knew that Catholicism was a false religion and she thought God had put her mother in hell and was tormenting her forever and ever because she never was told the truth because she believed in Roman Catholicism. And she thanked me because now she knows that all of that's just a bunch of lies and she can rest knowing that God's got her mother and he's going to be faithful to her mother. Anyway, guys, I'm going to hop off here. I love you and I'll see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.